All right, hey everybody, TG Watkins here, and let's see, it's October 6th, and we're going to be live in the markets today, so thanks everyone for joining, and we'll be diving into it. I've got some interesting stuff to show you on the internals today, so um, the market is obviously very volatile, very choppy, but the internals are uh, not looking so great today, so I'm still cautious about the upside. So anyone who happens to be new here, come over here to ProfitPilot.com. This is where you guys can find more information about me, check out the stuff that I write about, and the, the services that we offer, the inbox, the indicator, all that kind of stuff. And then still, because it's new, uh, we want to be talking about uh, our relationship with StockCharts.com. They've been great to work with. We now have the Moxie indicator on their platform. So that's fantastic. If you guys like their platform and you want to get over there, great. If you guys want to have it on two platforms, just in case anything goes down or there's a glitch out there, great. You can do that. And if you've already purchased the Moxie indicator through Simpler Trading and you have the receipt for that, then we'll give you, I think it's a $200 uh, coupon to the Simpler Trading store. So to make sure I have that right, just reach out to customer support if you already have the Moxie indicator on Thinkorswim from us and if you want to get it on stockcharts.com. So go ahead and uh, reach out to them about that and we'll see about the coupons. All right, <clears throat> then let's get into the markets. So the, the markets, you know, the S&P, the NASDAQ are getting to a place where we would imagine that they should be bouncing. Okay, so <clears throat> that's kind of what we're seeing <clears throat> is we've had quite a few down days and the downside is starting to, to slow down. And we are basically here on the weekly time frame, usually the 21 EMA on whatever time frame it is that we're studying and looking at that it should bounce, but we're still very, very heavy. And I'm just not quite seeing anything yet. So, um, you know, the week is still going. It's only Wednesday. So that bar hasn't finished. But if we close low, that that bar is actually the body of the candle is actually going to be closing below the 21, which may not be that great. Uh, but I would expect there to be a bounce at some point. What I've been telling people is the biggest question is what happens after the bounce? Because, you know, uh, the markets don't typically just go down like this. You know, they'll typically come down and then they bounce. And the question is, are they going to bounce up into resistance and then roll over? Or when they come down and they bounce, are they going to kind of find some strength and then go back up? And that's what we just don't know yet. We're kind of to the area where I'd imagine that there should be a bounce. But I can't confirm it yet. I don't see anything yet. And if we look <clears throat> over here on the lower time frames, <clears throat> you know, yesterday we had a, a big move up. OK, but we ran right into the underside of a downtrending hourly 50. So we still can't get up. And yesterday we still had a pretty big gap between price and the 15 minute 50. So, you know, I was looking around trying to see if we could actually test or hold any sort of support. And we still haven't done that. And so it's you know, there's just nothing to do yet as far as to the long side. I am seeing some positive divergence, okay, but it hasn't been kicking in yet. And we are seeing some positive divergence and we're basically at a, a double bottom. But, you know, until we really see something happen, until we can actually verify that price is going to be holding, we just don't have anything yet. So we have we saw this oh, two weeks ago, I think at this point, where price did hold some of the moving averages. But we're not getting any of that here yet. And so we just kind of keep hanging out. If you want to try and trade long, you're going to have to wait for some sort of confirmation right there. Otherwise, what might be happening is maybe this is flagging sideways like this into resistance. And then maybe we actually go lower from here. I mean, anything's possible. So I'm, I'm definitely keeping both sides uh, of the possibility open in my mind to see what's going on. Um, <clears throat> you know, just to show you, for example, that price can just keep going down. You know, we've been watching Apple just keep kind of mushing down here, just keeps kind of trending down here. Yes, at some point, I would imagine that there should be a bounce. But again, I don't quite see it yet. You know, we might be close to it, but it hasn't confirmed yet. Uh, Facebook has been having a pretty hard time. And uh, I know that they are news driven, obviously, about why they're down so much. But you can see that every time it came to the hourly 50, it got rejected, and it has been riding that third ATR on the daily chart pretty hard. So, <clears throat> you know, um, it's getting to a place where it's oversold, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to bounce or go up. It can just kind of stay down here and not really do much. So just, just be careful. We're trying to go to the long side. It's been challenging. Uh, I have not been trading to the long side, and so we're just kind of waiting to see what's going on out there. 
And then for the IWM, uh, it's looking pretty rough too. Uh, I've always kind of liked looking at the IWM, trying to wait for when it's going to go up and start a new bull run. And it's just been chopping for so long, it has not given us any opportunities. And then over the last few days, what I've been watching is that price kept getting rejected by the underside of a downtrending hourly 50, and the MOX indicator was still below zero. So yeah, I know I get a lot of people who are familiar with me. I got a lot of Moxie traders in this room, but uh, if you guys are new or have never seen this before, you know, just keep watching how I talk about the Moxie indicator and how it helps helps me trade. For example, seeing that the Moxie indicator has been below zero this whole time. There's no bullish setup like this. It's still it's still bearish, and so it's um, you know the IWM has been having some problems. And then I do sometimes talk about the UVXY, and it's been holding, which is concerning. <laughs> like. We want the UVXY, we want volatility to go down, and it is not going down. It's uh, It chops around, but boy, it's been holding up fairly well. And if this were a normal stock, I'd be considering buying this, which it does not bode well for the market. Now, I'm not really keen on trading this right now. It's, it's a choppy something. I'm not, you know, the market's still very confusing, um, but it does look like price is trying to get past that daily 50 and then the eight is over the 21. All those things are looking like they're pretty ripe. And then we also have the hourly 50 starting to angle up. The MOX indicator still above zero. And price just hasn't gone down yet. So we don't have a clear picture. But boy, you know, UVXY looks like it's hanging tight and wanting to move back up again. So that's uh, that's concerning for the markets. But, you know, we're short for our, a lot of things. All right. Then <clears throat> one of the other things that I want to talk to is... Um, so DNN, some of the uh, uranium stocks, UEC, UU, UU, uh, CCJ, you know, they had a really big run uh, a while ago. And I, I totally was caught flat footed on that. <clears throat> I mean, who would have expected that uranium out of blue was going to run like that? All right. But the setup was there. And so those of you who are maybe not familiar with the Moxie indicator, what we look for is the Moxie price trigger, which it just indicates when the indicator crosses from negative to positive. So that's good. That's what we want to see in order to go long. And then what I like is I want to see price actually test a moving average. And that's exactly what it did right there on the hourly chart. So we have a big move up. And now we were expecting, because that's really overbought, we're expecting price to come back down to the moving average. So you know, if we're looking at this kind of last week or something, you're like, oh, hey, okay, price kind of got close to the moving average and it bounced. And here is where the real power of the Moxie indicator comes in. And this is what um, I had a live session with the Moxie subscribers. And we were talking about this in depth. But uh, for you guys, I want to be able to show you this and just show you that, hey, this is how you stay out of some false trades. If you didn't have the Moxie indicator and you were looking at this, say, yesterday or the couple days before, you might be looking at this and saying, yeah, it bounced and now it's over this moving average and it should be holding that moving average and start to move up. But then if you went long and it uh, start, suddenly starts to break and fall down, you're like, well, what the heck happened? Why is that happening? Well, if you had the Moxie indicator, you could see that the indicator was still below zero. And what that is, is it's telling you that energy and momentum is still negative despite price being positive or up or trying to trend up or over the moving average, the hourly 50 and even the 200 in this case. But because the indicator was still negative and below zero, it was telling you this was a false long. This is what I call an inverse trampoline move. You should not be long. Price should not be over the 50 if the Moxie indicator is below zero. And so this was never anything I could consider to the long side. And sure enough, today we get it breaking down. Now, maybe sometime in the future it will be a long trade, but not right now. We don't see anything yet. And so those were some things that I wanted to show you guys of how the Moxie indicator works in case you want to add it to your own kind of trading strategies. So, yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, Joe. So Mara, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, ha it seems to be following the dollar because if you look at, uh, well, let's see, UUP, and you can see the dollar has been trending up pretty well. And so Ethereum, Bitcoin seem to be following the dollar. And if we do this, yeah, there was a huge move. And again, I kind of missed this one. It hadn't, it hasn't done the kind of patterns that I look for. I mostly like to trade on the hourly time frame, and on the hourly time frame, it just shot up. There really wasn't a setup for me. Um, the only place it kind of did it was on the 15 minute time frame, where it had uh, bounced off the 15 minute 50 in a couple places. And so it's like, great, that's that's a nice move. I missed it. What I'm going to be waiting for is price to come back down. 
uh, to a viable place on the hourly time frame. My concern, like this is a great move. And so if you were quick on it and you got it, fantastic. You know, that's great. But since I missed it, I can't go buy it up here because it's been running the third ATR. It's even up here at the daily third ATR. I mean, it's sky high. It's gone vertical for a few days. And the other concern I have is that for all of how much this thing has moved up, the hourly 50 is still below the hourly 200. That's the fast moving average below the slow moving average. And that's still technically bearish. So I would be looking for a pullback at some point, And then we'll see if the fast moving average crosses over the slow moving average. And then I want to see if price actually comes back down to test the moving average. So I think back here, there was an example of that. Yeah, right in through here. So even if, zoom in in here. So even if you kind of think, oh, okay, I missed this move. Like, yeah, there was a big move right there, right? We were kind of in the same situation. Bitcoin has just shot up so much. It's really high. It's off the moving average, all that kind of stuff. Well, what do you do? Well, again, with the Moxie indicator, helping you. And if you look at the regular trampoline move, that's what this was. You can see that price pulled back below the hourly 50, but the moxie indicator was above zero, telling you that generally energy and momentum and power were still to the upside. And so that was something that you could take to the long side. And it worked out for a while. It was got a little bit choppy because either the daily chart needed to pull back. But that's something that I'm looking for. So just like on DNN with those uranium stocks, that the inverse trampoline move told you that you should not be long and that that was a false entry for the long side. Well, for GBTC, the box indicator was telling you a regular trampoline move, which was telling you that price should not be below the 50 if the box indicator was above zero. And so this is where the box indicator can kind of tell you, well, what's the overall strength? What's really going on inside of price with momentum, despite what price might be doing? So it helps give you some of those um, those rails and tracks to be working with. So that's why I'm like, okay, I can't go buy Bitcoin up here. Let's go wait for a pullback and we'll see what we can do sometime later. And then we'll catch hopefully a bigger move because yeah, this is a great move. But if this is going to be the beginning of the start of a trend, we should get a pullback and then we get a nice trend. So I'm, I'm no problem. We can wait. <clears throat> um, FF, what's, uh, what is that? Slash MBT? Is that the ticker that you're asking for? And then so Mara, same thing. It uh, didn't give me a setup on the hourly time frame. It only gave a setup on the 15 minute time frame. And basically it was right there where price bounced off the 15 minute 50 and the Moxie indicator was above zero. So that was a 15 minute time frame setup. But on the hourly, I still got to wait for a pullback in order to get the kind of trade that I want to get with that setup. So notice that the hourly 50 is still below the hourly 200. So it, it's not in an uptrend yet. You know, a, a real uptrend is going to be when that 50 is able to cross over the 200. So I'm pretty darn sure that there's going to be a a, a robust pullback that, or even just maybe a, a long flag sideways that we can then catch and get into later. So, yep, this is a first move. I will wait for a second move. <clears throat> uh, let's see, micro version, let's see. So slash MBT, I'm not familiar with this one. Let's see if it pulls it up. Okay, so there was a little bit cleaner of a setup there. You could see here where price was staying over the hourly 50. And basically there was a level here and you could see that there was some positive divergence on the Moxie indicator and then it held the hourly 50. And then right there, it looks like it bounced off the hourly 50. So decent move on that one. And then on the 15 minute time frame, let's see if I can move that over. It's a little bit hard to see, but there was some right there. It scooped the 15 minute 50 pretty nicely. Box indicator was pretty strong. Take a little fade and then very strong again. So yeah, if you guys were watching down on the lower time frames, as I said on uh, you know GBTC, which was the ETF of Bitcoin, I saw it set up on the 15 minute time frame. But I like to trade the hourly time frames, and it just didn't. It just it just blew away for me. So yeah, there wasn't anything I could do about that. <clears throat> All right, so let's kind of move on from there. Uh, just got to wait for the pullback when it comes into the cryptos. Now, another one away, which is a travel ETF, but they're all kind of looking like this. So this is kind of why I'm just pulling up the ETF away, jets, uh, some of the hotels, casinos, they're all kind of doing the same thing, the cruise lines. And in through here, we could see that price was basically getting rejected up here at the daily 200. So I'm looking for the pullback 
This is what I spoke to the Moxie traders subscri subscribers yesterday. I was like, I just don't have a good feeling about this. I can't quite see what really what's going on. And uh, it was pretty good that we didn't do anything about it because that was a pretty big move to back down to the downside today. So maybe they keep going lower. That's fine. We just kind of sit and wait. But if we're going to be trying to look at these things long, we're going to have to wait for them to come back down into support, like that pullback that I'm looking for on Bitcoin. We're just going to have to see. So another thing that we can be looking at this with the Moxie indicator is you could see it tried going price tried going higher, but the Moxie indicator was lower. That's your negative divergence. What the Moxie indicator is trying to tell you is why is price going higher, but it's doing on less energy. And that's how you get those di negative divergences, negative or positive, depending on which way we're looking. Uh, yes, yeah, so Austin, let's see, looking at A and Y. Um, well, wow, nice, man. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. I was a little hesitant about this. And I said, for me, not quite where I want it to be. But I said, if you guys want to try this, it is holding the 15 minute 50 and and the Moxie indicator was above zero. So Austin, did you grab that? For me, I wasn't quite sure about it. Uh, it had been chopping sideways for quite some time. And then right here, you get to see it did just kind of hold the hourly 50. The Moxie indicator is still below zero. So that's kind of what was throwing me off about it. But yep, yeah, right there, if you wanted to try it and be nimble, you could try, try that as long as it holds the 15 minute 50. So some of the, yeah, nice Austin, good job. So one way to look at it is if you guys try and take a trade, and this is kind of the thing about trading is that, you know, if you try and get in, it doesn't work out, understand what your parameters are for why it's not working out and either get out or, you know, set a stop, something. But some of these past moves, here's where it held the 15 minute 50 and then it broke it. And then you can see it was trying to hold the 15 minute 50, but it didn't. And then once again, could not hold the 15 minute 50. So when did it finally hold the 15 minute 50 and work? Right here. And so that's the thing. If for me, what I need is I need price to hold and engage with moving averages in order to tell me that the trade has been verified. And so back here, you know, didn't hold, didn't hold, didn't hold, finally held. Now there's a move. Cool. And it looks like there's some volume on this thing. So once again, I'll kind of see if there's a place to get in on this on the hourly chart. Otherwise, what this would be doing uh, for now, just kind of like Bitcoin is moving, is as long as it can stay over the 15 minute 50, then you've got a trade. And that's kind of the initial thing that I would be looking for. So a, a fractal nature of trading. It'll set up on one time frame and it'll keep going on that time frame until that kind of runs out of support. And then you set up on a different time frame and you see if that one keeps going. <clears throat> Zip. Let's see. I haven't heard about that one. Well, okay. Yeah, Zip looks interesting. Let me look at this. Uh, yeah, so newer Zip car. Okay, they've got a lot of those up here in Washington. So yeah, this does look pretty interesting. This is what I like to see is where price came back down into the moving average and then back down into the moving average. So yeah, this looks pretty interesting. And if price can continue to hold the 15 minute 50 there, that would be good. And what I'm also seeing here is, kind of zoom in on that, as price had this double bottom on the 15, you could see that there was positive divergence on the 15 minute Moxie indicator. So again, this is how we use the Moxie indicator to help tell us what's actually going on inside price. Because yeah, double bottoms are great, but using the indicator can show you some of that divergence that's actually setting up. And this is positive divergence. So this was good stuff right there. Um, so for now, if price can continue to hold the 15 minute 50, great. And then eventually what I'd like to see is I want to see price hold the hourly 50 because right now there's a bit of a problem like price is moving up, but notice that the hourly 50 is still kind of trending down. So those are those are diverging paths. You know, price can't go up if the moving average is going down. So at some point, I would like to see price either flag or pull back, but I need to see price pull the hourly 50 into an uptrend. And we'll have to give that a little bit more time. It's kind of like if you look back here, let me see if I can, yeah, here we go. So here are a couple examples. Let me zoom in on that. So for example, you know, see here, like price trying to move up, but what's the 50 doing? It's down. Price tried to move up, what's the 50 doing? It's basically flat. You know, price finally moved up, and then what it do? It bounced off of an uptrending hourly 50. That, that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. That's what I want to see. All right, well, we got a couple more minutes if you guys are interested in looking at any other things. Uh, I got a, another one. So some of the FANG stocks, you know, uh, we talk about Facebook and Apple, Amazon. 
You know, it seems as though we should be getting into an area where price should bounce. <clears throat> you know, mostly because we have a double bottom right there. And then we are pretty oversold in that situation. And price is just getting pretty far away from some of its moving averages. And then even if we look closer, say on the hourly chart, you know, it does look like we're getting kind of a, a local double bottom. Like this should hopefully be a double bottom. But in order for this to work, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see price actually hold and engage and follow that 15 minute 50 to the upside. So that could be happening today. This is something that we really need to be watching for for these larger fang stocks. And right there <clears throat> is going to be the key because <clears throat> what you can see is, you know, earlier kept getting rejected by those time frames right there. But then up here, you can see it did hold, but then it failed. So this is where, you know, you got to try and find, say, the head of the snake. Like, how does a snake move? Starts with the head of the snake. And so for me, the 15 minute time frame is the head of the snake to where we can watch the, the beginning of that uh, movement and see where the rest of it follows. Because all of this is going to start on the 15 minute time frame and then work its way into the hourly and then work its way into the daily. Um, you know, if we get a, if we do get a move up here on the 15, just be aware again, fractal nature, we're going to be putting ourselves into a, a difficult situation on the hourly. I mean, yeah, we might be able to cross over the hourly 50, but notice that the hourly 50 is still trending down. So this is not like one of those buy and hold and think that this is going to be the next swing long. Uh, we might just be trading a bounce and then we have to be careful where that bounce goes into as far as resistance. So it's, it's still a very challenging situation out there. <clears throat> Let me just show you, um, Fitch was kind of coming to mind as far as that. So here are a couple examples where, you know, right back here, Price got pretty oversold for Fitch. And you know what? It popped up. But then what? Pulled back. And then it continued to run into resistance. And then it ran into resistance. And then it ran into resistance. So these are the things that if you're looking at a name or something like that, that is generally trending down, you just need to make sure that if it is trending down, that it's the, you know, and you're trying to go long, you might just be catching bounces in a downtrend. Bounce in a downtrend, bounce in a downtrend. And in that situation, it might be more lucrative or easier to short those bounces if you're interested in doing that. So we kind of got to change our mindset of what's going on with this market. It might be it might be the situation where, OK, we see a bounce coming. Great. Trade it long, but understand that it might be right up into resistance and it could roll over again. So don't uh, don't kind of fool yourself as far as thinking, oh, yeah, this is it. And we're going to, you know, oversold bounce. and We're going to rip roaring again. We just don't know that yet. We are not confirmed. And the other thing is, you know, what I was saying about Amazon as far as its double bottom, right? So here is Fitch at its double bottom. But you know what? It broke lower. Uh, so just be careful. It might be, you know, bouncing into that because of the initial double bottom right there. But then it runs into resistance and breaks even lower. We really got to stay on our toes. And we really have to make sure that when we're in this kind of market, we can think of both possibilities. So that even if we're long and it works out for a bit, take it off, you know, take little wins, take little trades. And then if it doesn't work, get out quickly and just be prepared that any of your trades right now may not work out because the market is very, very volatile and very crazy. Let me uh, bring up this. This is a uh, showing you the internals of what's going on. The other concern I have about today, you know, if the if we're saying that the market wants to go up or if this is maybe where things bounce, Notice that the order flow, the volume order flow is very, very negative. We've got a lot of down pressure. There's more selling than there is buying out there. And you can see that a, a big majority of stocks are down today. Now, I know that this can always turn around and move back up. But, you know, for right now, we still need to be careful. It's not, not the greatest environment out there. Yes, we could be setting up, but we have to keep, keep that in mind. All right, let's see. Play. Uh, Dave and Buster's. Yeah, this is what I was talking about yesterday with the, the cruise lines, kind of the travel stocks, the, you know, the anti COVID stocks, the stocks that need COVID to not be around in order to succeed. Um, it, these things are, I don't have a very clear picture. So play uh, the casinos, the hotels, uh, live wire, event bright, you know, all those kind of names. It was like, they look like they're trying to get going. 
and play does look decent, but I was very hesitant to, to play some of them yesterday. And that, I think that was a good thing because a lot of them went down yesterday. Play seems to be holding up, so maybe it's got some pretty good relative strength. I still don't have a great feeling about it. I don't know exactly what to be saying about this. If you're going to be taking something like this, basically, I'd like to see price stay over the daily 21 to begin. And I would like to see price stay over the hourly 50. But I can't confirm that that's going to be happening here. So if it doesn't work and we see price start to break down, I wouldn't be too surprised to eventually see price come back down to the daily 50. So you know, that's why it's, it's, it's tough. And if we look at, say, Caesars, CZR, you know, this one we talked about yesterday. This is where I'm saying, this is why I want to say, I want to see price stay over the daily 21. Initially, it's going to be a move to the upside. These have not been the easiest movers. Yes, on, a, on an absolute basis, even from here to here, they are up. But that was a, a pretty challenging move to trade, at least in my, in my world. And what I've been seeing lately is we've seen price try to go higher, the Moxie indicator go lower. And I'm just not sure that... I just don't know how much more is left to the upside in these things. And they're all going to kind of travel together, going to travel in packs. And so it makes me a little bit cautious to try and get some of these things because I'm just not I'm not too sure. I'm seeing a lot of weakness out there. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Uh, let's go back to here. Guys, remember, uh, the Moxie Indicator is now on StockCharts.com. Uh, if you are already, if you already own the Moxie Indicator from Thinker, from uh, Simpler Trading, on Thinkorswim, and you also want to pick this up, we've got a $200 coupon for you to the Simpler Trading Store. Just talk to our customer service. And then uh, if you guys are interested in that, we got that. And then uh, anybody else who wants to get more information about me, Moxie, what we do for subscriptions, all that kind of stuff, come over here to ProfitPilot.com. And uh, yeah, take a poke around, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks.